It wouldn't be fair to say I have a favorite restaurant in Venice, but my guest today runs the one spot that is nearest to my heart. Now he's not only wowing them with his world-class Venetian cuisine, but he's created an Amaro that makes the gondoliers sing. I'm Susan Schwartz, your drinking companion, and this is Lush Life Podcast. Every week we are inspired to live life one cocktail at a time. I'm not the only one who Luca De Vita has welcomed into Alla Testiere, the wonderful restaurant he owns with Chef Bruno Gavanin. London's Russell Norman of Trattoria Bruto, a former Lush Lifer, is also a dear friend and colleague. Out of this friendship, Amaro Nestrano was born. One sip of an Amaro that is a tribute to Venice and its lagoon is all I needed to love it. But it seems I am not alone. To bastardize John Ruskin's quote, Venice is now a splendor of one Amaro. During my stay in Venice, I was thrilled to sit down with my friend Luca to hear how and why Amaro Nistrano came to be. My name is Luca Di Vita. I born in Venice and I grew up in Venice and I work in Venice and I live in Venice. I own um, a very small restaurant called Osteria Le Testiere since more than 25 years. It's a long time. It is a long time. <laughs> and uh, it's a very, very, very small restaurant with only 10 tables in the heart of the city. And we are always very, very, very busy, luckily. We, being Venetian, being grown up in, in this uh, beautiful place, uh, very peculiar, very different... I've been collecting a lot of friends and I've been, I met so many people from all around the world. One of them, with one of them, we, we got a really sincere and beautiful friendship. He's from London. His name is uh, Russell Norman. He's the founder of Popo Restaurant and recently another new restaurant called Bruto. The restaurant that you opened. Why did you want to... Oh, even open a restaurant. Were you interested in in flavors and cooking? You know, what was the concept or or idea of why you wanted to open Alle Testiere? Alle Testiere is in fact a, a classic Venetian restaurant compared to all that's going on in the world. The, the point of view of the cuisine and and food world. We are serving just the freshness of the fish market every single day with some touch of uh, the most classic cuisine, unexpected cuisine in uh, Venetian cuisine, which is the Asian touch, that they always sound very, very modern. But in our case, they are there since uh, the Renaissance. So they're classic ingredients like all spices or herbs. And so we play a little bit. We let the chef play in the kitchen with some uh, perfumes, but just offering very, very few freshest f- dish, dishes every single day. Why did you want to open a restaurant? Was it something when ah, you were okay. young that you okay. wanted to do? Okay. No, it hasn't been a, a dream when I was a child. But my dream was the wine business and the wine market and the white world. So I became sommelier when I was very, very, very young. And then I followed this career, the professional sommelier. I'm a member of some judge panels in the Italy, and this passion for food was there too. But uh, my real big, big, work, big uh, love was, uh, was wine. When I met Bruno, who's my chef, who's my actual partner, we were together at the army, so we met a <laughs> very, very long time ago. He was uh, working as a chef, as a cuoco, as a cook in some uh, Venetian restaurant. We, we talked many times about this, uh, the possibility to do something together. He was, you know, very knowledge in the kitchen and I had my knowledge in the wine business. In the meantime, I started to work for hotel chains and I, work in, I was working in some hotel business for many years. So I also had this kind of talent to welcome customers. Yeah, everything happened by chance, by chance. I met Bruno and said, I found a place around here. I met him right in the front of the shop, mm-hmm. right in the front of the restaurant one night. I said, I found something here and I'm planning to do this. Uh, What do you think? What are you doing? I was almost leaving to Japan to open a a travel agency for my company. 
And I said, come on, I, I love the idea. Is, is it a small place, a big place? He said, very small. And, and it was very, very secret on the information. And they say, okay, let, let's, let's talk about it. One week later, we started the whole thing. And we emptied this place who was full of uh, old furniture or things. And uh, the, the name before was uh, Da Mario, because Mario was there. So we had to change the name of the place. The antique man who was helping us to clean the place to say, hey, why don't you use these headboards there to, to do something? They're beautiful. They are from the 30 and, and they, they said and have some value. Don't throw them away. And so we had this idea to hang them on the wall and use them to, to hang bottles. And when the, the headboards were on the wall, the name was there. You know, yeah. We didn't do nothing special to and then we started. We started with a lot of Venetian people. With the one person who was working in the kitchen before there is still working for us. We have at the moment seven people working for us, and three of them are with us from the first day. That's incredible. For, since uh, May 1994. That's amazing. You were telling me that you, one of the people that you met was Russell Norman. Many, many people from, from England, they discovered this place. And Russell Norman loved so much this place, but he's a big lover of, of Venice. So he um, got so many influences from Venice that he couldn't resist. He started to plan this uh, opening of Popo restaurant. I mean, to move Venice to London and, and uh, started... Uh, to feed the Londoners with some uh, proper Venetian, I mean, real Venetian food. And, yeah, he's with us. I mean, he's a friend since uh, the very beginning, more than 20 years. And we did so many things together. And we've been cooking there. He's been cooking here. We've been doing something on boats. We've been really having fun of, of our job together. And this is the, a little bit the birth of... Amaro Nostrano, because one day in one of the usual uh, lunch, very big table in which Russell invites all his friends, we have chef coming, we have people from this business, and I said, Russell, we need to do something to celebrate our friendship, but something that we can share with some other people, not only. And he said, oh, lovely, yeah, let's do that. Uh, and but what? And something that Everybody will have the possibility to enjoy and, and think and, and, and love it, and w which is the most lovely and most uh, um, intense moment uh, of a dinner, is the after dinner. So I said, let's do Namaro. Let's do something when you finish your everything, when everything is gone, when the comments about food, about wines is gone, it's there. And yeah, let's do Namaro. A Namaro that will... Uh, married Venice and London because uh, your love is here but you have something to say from London and yeah the result was I started to inquire to ask to some producers liqueur producer how to make it and they sent me down to Trieste that has a very very long uh, historical tradition of liquors and so many liquorifici and being also in the middle you know, of a, a very commercial area. It was like a place where a lot of commerce and, and influences from other countries, from Middle East, uh, and were already going. So we, um, I went to Trieste, I met these people, I told them about this project, and they immediately fell in love with the idea to do the first liquor of Venice, of Lagoon. What I really... Um, don't normally like about Amari in general in Italy is that they are normally too intense and, and sweet, which is a, a big contradiction. How do you say? Yes, yeah. exactly. A contradiction. You know, they are called Amari, bitter, but they are sweet. So I say that I want to do an Amaro, but I don't want to make it sweet. I want to do it Amaro. Uh, if it's possible, even salty, because of Venice, because where I want to do something that really will try to reproduce as much as we can the taste of Venice. I, I must admit, I saw their faces and they, are, they were really excited and scared in the meantime. But they, we worked. We, we immediately started to work. Other than salty, did you have any other ideas of ingredients that you were thinking that you wanted in it? 
The natural ingredients of the lagoon are um, normally already in our dishes, often in our dishes. So, um, more wood, which is the santonico, no? the uh, absent, mm -hmm. the marine absent, the salicornia, sandfire, um, salted water that we use quite often for our sauces, and the, it's uh, already inside all mollusks from the lagoon clams, all kind of mussels, th these things, crabs. They have a very special taste because of the very special taste of the salted water of the Adriatic. Especially when uh, the water, like in the lagoon, is quite shallow. You have a big concentration of salt. And uh, fish and, and the fauna that lives in this kind of, of places, they get a lot of taste of this ambience where they live. So, I say salt is the point of the whole story. So then th let's make it proper Amaro style, like something that will make well, no? you will feel well. Amaro is born like this in the, in the 1800 for pharmacy, for uh, hospital, for helping people who are having health problems. So let's uh, put in these things some essential oils or whatever. I mean, this is your job, I say. That. I don't know what, what to put it. That will uh, make the Amaro healthy. The only thing I said is that I want to do something very natural. I don't want any moment of chemical in it. Often you see this terrible word on the Amaro called aroma. Huh? When you see this word, aroma, aroma naturale, it's even worse. I mean, it's, there's no natural aroma. There's no aromas you can put, which is not chemical. So, I don't want aromas. I want infusion. I want very natural. Like you make it home for yourself. Russell joined me. He came to London. He came to Trieste, sorry. And we went to, together to explain the, the whole project. And then I'm... He said, I'll be back when we will have something to taste. I've been working for six months up and down to Esther. Every time we used to go there, we had like a 10 example, 10, 10 tasting. Yeah. Every time I cut seven and keep three for the next time, they uh, keep 10 again, three, cut seven, three keep, and go ahead. They try to put in it so many things, but always natural infusion in uh, Italian they're called alcolati I have no idea how they are in English they are infusion distilled mm -hmm. and we met these people who make the infusion who are also in Friuli using uh, natural products so I've been checking all the sources of all the single ingredients we've been selecting the right juniper the right materials for every single aromas, I mean, every single taste, sorry, <laughs> in the in the liquor. Choosing the best and the most natural. So at the end, the, the very end, I call Russell and I say, I think we are on that way. He came uh, to Trieste and it was a very, very, very rainy day, so bad. Something special was happening that day, for sure. You couldn't see, uh, like, 10, 20 meters. And we got there and we got these final five things. And we've been tasting and asking them to add a little bit, to take off a little bit, make it a little bit more of this, a little bit more of that. At the end, the balance was, I presume, I think, I hope, the very good one. There was a, a nice taste of Venice and its ingredients and plus uh, a little part of uh, citrusy and uh, freshness that were making balsamic, that was making uh, the healthy work of the, of the Amaro. And then a very pure aroma, taste, perfume of gin, which was the London experience in it. Of course. 
You had to have Russell in it somewhere. <laughs> somewhere. The lagoon plus a little bit of London. Exactamente. And we were very happy. We hug very strong and say, okay, here we are. And uh, Nostrano was born. And how about the bottle and the label mm. and things like that? Did you already have an idea of what you wanted? We've been working with these people of Trieste for a while. And something very fun that happens during all my trial, all, all the... Our, our try and making the... It was that to relax, you know, it, I mean, tasting can be a little stressing if you are, and if, if you want to, if you're doing something, not if you are just tasting other things. In the meantime, we, we've been playing with other ingredients and we discovered like uh, tonic water, like uh, lemon, like... Uh, different kind of uh, of drinks and uh, with Nost mixing up nostrano with them and we discovered that uh, keeping nostrano only 27% was the key to use nostrano also to make cocktails and uh, to use it properly as a liquor not only like an amaro so nostrano has this double face double face that you can have it as an amaro digestivo or you can use it for a cocktail uh, ingredients for a cocktail and the, the the key that i learned from them because they are the, they are the experts was to keep it not too heavy in alcohol um bottle we had a huge <laughs> a huge uh, offer obviously of different bottles and we um, decided for a bottle called regina very much like a cuban rum bottle because we loved the size, I have very small hands and I, and I didn't like to see in my hands this big and long thing. And, and I thought that also it's very handable, okay, something that you can use it and hang it very well without, uh, without losing it, uh, even for cocktail men, that they need something easy to hold and not. So this seems to be the good size for it. Label has been, um, we had a first edition with uh, our names on it and to say, please share, everybody will need to be a member of this club. <laughs> and, uh, and then uh, now the label is uh, a little bit more, I would say, um, in Italian we will say riconducibile, but it's, uh, it means uh, will bring you in the place where everything started. So it has a lovely draw from a comic men quite known in Italy from the lagoon. And it has all the ingredients, everything the law obliges to put in it. It's a lot for so many, so many indications, so many. Um, the suggestions, how to drink it. If, wait, wait, if first, ever. one more thing, yeah. very important, the Two. name. Ah, okay. How did you come up with the name? Then we'll talk about how to drink it. Okay, I must tell you that Nostrano is our piano B. <laughs> oh, the plan B. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we had a list of names. Obviously, I made my list uh, and Russell made his list. Nostrano was uh, the top of his list. Mm. And in, in Italy, Nostrano reminds you immediately two things in Italian. A very good cigar, it's called Nostrano del Brenta, and uh, in general, salami. Oh, funny. So in, uh, in Italian, the word Nostrano is very general, and it doesn't give you exactly the... Uh, apparently, in English, it works much better, and uh, it, it brings you to something local, something ours, something that we made, but not only for us. My first idea, the piano A, was different, was Nostramaro. Oh. That means Nostramaro, our, our Amaro. Oh. But unfortunately, it was already registered. Oh, no, our oh, Nostramaro. Nost it is easier to say Nostrano That's for it, someone who's not Italian, I have to admit. Yes, Nostrano instead of Nost Nostramaro. Nostramaro. It sounds like something, yeah, like a little mm -hmm. gioco di parole. So when an Italian hears the word nostrano, do they automatically think? Nostrano, it's basically ours, ours. made in our territory. But those two things I, t I mentioned before are very popular. So okay. the uh, nostrano will need to climb a little bit on his, uh, on his uh, notorietà, on his name for 
to become famous like the Brenta, the Brenta cigar was right. there since hundreds of years. So we needed a little time. And look, you had to give Russell something, right? Exactly. You give Russell something. It was his <laughs> top plan, right? <laughs> exactly. exactly. I was very happy that uh, my, my name was, uh, wasn't was workable. <laughs> I'm sure. But now I'm very happy of it anyway, because I, I really, after uh, a little time, I needed a little time to digest it. But now I'm very happy. Good, See good. <laughs> now, you were saying about drinking it. Did you? Did you have an idea of how you wanted it to be drunk? You know, did you want to always serve it after mm -hmm. your, you know, your your guests ate dinner? Exactly. And then someone said, oh, wait, I, I, it could be the cocktail. I mean, tell me your journey about how you wanted exactly. it and then how then you decided maybe to change the, your idea. Um, yeah, the, the, the beginning, the very beginning, it was there and it was doing his job as an Amara. So it was uh, there, even on the list of the restaurants, making uh, his uh, Amaro and taking his Amaro place. But then we thought about all this try we made and, and we, we thought that was reminding us something, something we drank before. And in the meantime, we didn't know exactly how to use it. So we started with something very simple that it's still on the list and still very appreciated, which is uh, a gin tonic, a lagoon gin tonic that I called Bacan, who is the name of uh, a little Venetian beach that comes and disappears in the middle of the lagoon with the tide, and where all the Venetians go with their own boat. Just adding some uh, tonic water to, to uh, Nostrano and a little bit more of gin. This is very, very popular in summer. I've seen so many bars serving it in Venice, so many places, and people love it. And then we started to do something a little bit more intense. And then I have barmans, a bunch of barmans who are using and sending me their recipe. And, and it's really beautiful. The um, combination, most classic, with the liquors to make Americano, to make Negroni, to make a Spritz, which is the drink of Venice. I actually was going to ask you, did you think of a spritz? That was going to be my next question, because we are in spritz land. This was more, as, as often happens, I didn't think to it. But Russell, in, in London, immediately started with this serving Nostrano spritz in London, in his places. And now it's to spritz and, I think, Negroni. Yeah, he's doing that. When he came here and we did a kind of presentation on the Edipo Red Boat, I don't know if you've heard, it's about this beautiful wooden boat sailing and serving beautiful food around the lagoon. The um, idea that they be in the middle of the summer, very fresh, was uh, with uh, at the place of Pims. Uh, you know how you drink Pims in London with some fruits yes. in a carafe like this? That was really, really, really beautiful. And so it has been added in the summer to our cocktail list. Too. So it's been an education <laughs> from wine to Amaro to now cocktails. Exactly. I exactly. Know it's, it's new word. All it's been very, very new, but exciting. And then surrounded by people who really know what they do. And, uh, and open. It's, it's open. Now, what I really like and what we really like is... To keep it open to experiences and ideas and of anybody who can invent something and just publish or whatever or send us their, their idea, the, how they use Nostrano, how they are part of the Nostrano world. So I know that, you know, everyone in England can have, London can have it because they can go to Tartaria Bruto, but any, any plans to have it anywhere else in the world? See, si, see, si, see, si. we have already a... Uh, mm, couple of distribution in France. It's uh, quite well distributed in the north of Italy. Very, very soon, I don't know when this is going to be, but it's the day of the Carnevale this year. Nostrano will open his own website with his e-commerce and there will be a little bit more social. We've been, we've been very unsocial until now. We've been very closed, a little bit like only for friends. But now it's the moment to make it more popular. We found one important in the States, in California, for the moment. And with plenty of people. We are doing a presentation in Belgium this summer. It's, it's fun. It's like a, a, a new baby, you know, to take around the world and by hand like this and... 
and um, lovely, uh, some beautiful people. Well, as much as I love a cocktail, to me, having Nostrano, the fun of having Nostrano is after I've had a meal at Alla Testiere, <laughs> I must admit. So um, for, all of, for everyone to, to be able to come to Venice and enjoy first a meal and then Nostrano, that is like, that's it. That's the gran K, as you say. Grazie. But if they can't, <laughs> then they can have a Nostrano cocktail. Certo, certo. Absolutely. They will find all the um, recipe on the website very soon, so they can play. And I'm always at their disposal. If they need a, a little help, they can just send me an email. I will help them with the really passion and love. All right, well, fa- fabulous. Thank you so much for being here. <laughs> grazie, grazie a te. Uh, Thank you so much, Susan. Sure. It was so fabulous to have Luca join me on the program. I can't wait for my next plate of spaghetti alla vongole and then my perfect digestivo of Amaro Nostrano. Make sure to check out their website, amaronestrano.it, for more information. Which brings us right to our cocktail of the week. Our cocktail of the week is the Bacan which, as Lucas said, is a tiny beach that only the Venetians know about. Until now. Just add 30 mils of Nostrano and 20 mils of gin to a highball glass filled with ice. Then, top it up with tonic water and stir gently. Lastly, drop in a lemon slice. So easy. You'll find this recipe, more Venetian cocktail recipes like the Spritz and Scrobino, and all the cocktails of the week at alushlifemanual.com, where you'll find all the ingredients in our shop. Sorry if you're sick about hearing Venice, Venice, Venice. It is my fave place, and there are loads of great bars, many that you will be hearing about very soon. So if you live for Lush Life, make sure you head out to the bars and restaurants you love and tell them how much you love them. Theme music for Lush Life is by Stephen Shapiro and used with permission. And Lush Life is always and will be forever produced by Evo Terra and Simpler Media Productions. Which leaves me to say the wise words of Oscar Wilde, all things in moderation, including moderation. And always drink responsibly. Next week, you'll hear from a few folks who descended on Venice for Venice Cocktail Week. Until that time, bottoms up. Bottoms up.